Good morning and welcome. I'm Nigel Robertson with WIFF News 4 and I am really excited to be with you this morning. But also with Taylor Davis, Nicole Rabbit, Lindsay McPhail and a cast of thousands. We are coming to you from Greenville, South Carolina. This is the NHE 2021 Virtual Employee Conference delivered live via Zoom and Whova. We have an exciting program with top speakers, fantastic videos, lots of prizes, jam-packed exhibit hall, incredible awards, lots of social networking online as well. Stay tuned in, it moves fast. Today, we have four segments with breaks in between, you know, so you can get coffee to chat, post photos, visit exhibits, a bio break. Hope you enjoy your swag bags delivered this week. Show off your new look and win great prizes from Lindsay and Nicole. Important part of today is honoring our award winners. We wish we could have done this in person. Awards to honorees and prize t-shirt winners. It will all ship next week. Hope for no technical difficulties, but stay tuned. Expect some moments of pause throughout as we switch technology back and forth. And stay tuned throughout as Nicole will join us throughout the program to announce those prize winners. Now, some of this is live, some of this is recorded, but all of it is fun. Share those thoughts and pictures via Whova Uploads. Now get ready for some fun. Let's get this show started with a message from a very special guest. Hello, I'm South Carolina Lieutenant Governor Pamela Abbott. I wanna take this opportunity to welcome all of you participating in the NHE Virtual Annual Employee and Partner Meeting. Thank you for the work you do in our communities around the Palmetto State with the nearly 18,000 residents you serve. I hope you all have a productive and successful meeting. Good morning and welcome to the NHE 2021 Virtual Employee Conference delivered live via Zoom and Whova. As Nigel mentioned, today we have an exciting program. Some top speakers, fantastic videos, important updates, lots of prizes, and a jam-packed exhibit hall, incredible awards, and a special big announcement at the very end. Stay tuned in, it moves fast. I hope you enjoyed your swag bags delivered this week. A very important part of today is honoring our award winners. We wish we could do so in person and certainly hope and plan to do so in person next year. Our conference theme, Building for the Future, is all about positioning our organization to get better every day, to serve our residents and customers at the highest levels possible, to attract, develop, retain a top team, including each of you, and to provide enjoyment and satisfaction to each of us. Part of doing this is improving our training and development of you, our most important asset. And you'll hear later about how we intend to do just that based on your feedback over time as to training's importance. We also intend to take a proactive approach to developing and enhancing our diversity, equity, and inclusion efforts company-wide. And we'll kick off that journey with a special introductory program today from the good folks at HRQ who will help us in that effort. I'll be back shortly to give a more in-depth review of the state of our company, which is strong, forward-looking, and committed to the long-term and to you. In the meantime, please enjoy today's roughly three-hour program, have fun, and celebrate and honor all of our award winners with me. Ready for some fun? Let's get started with a very special video that talks about building a better company. My passion for cooking began when I was seven. My aunt, she went to this culinary program and she would come home and she would be so excited and she wanted to share everything with us. So I would hurry up and finish my homework and run in the kitchen. And that's where my passion came from. Here at Lowe's, the kitchen was like, like the happy place for me. We're here to do a job of being able to take care of our guests, but having fun while we're doing it and being natural and being yourself is very important. We want you to be unique. We want you to be you. I walk into a meeting, you know, doing a runway walk and 
And they're like, oh, there he is. He's here. Everybody here at Lowe's and loves me who I am, even on my crazy side. Being yourself here uh, at Lowe's is like working with your family. You can just be yourself. I think every single one of us brings something different to, uh, to the team. The way we approach the guests. For me, it's always the big smiles and open hearts and uh, ready to assist in any way, any way I can. It is a family-owned company, so they can take care of their own, even though we're in the business of taking care of everyone else. For example, I once had a colleague who was in the summer of the summer, and the car was broken. He couldn't go home, but the people in the 会到外面去帮他把那个车胎给修好，让他能够就是说啊、嗯，很安全的回到家。It's an all hands on deck sort of atmosphere too, where we're always willing to help out as much as we can. There is one reception for 300, 400 on the terrace, and then it started raining, so everyone helped out, even from housekeeping, our GM managers, everyone, to bring all the equipment downstairs and set it up within. 30 minutes on job or outside of your job. Just knowing that they are there for you and they'll support you whatever you're gonna do. We're a family, we're a team. I brag to everybody about my job. <laughs> they be like, are you serious? Yes, I'm serious. It's like, this is for real, for real. I love my job. The state of NHE has never been stronger despite a global pandemic, social unrest, political change, economic uncertainty, and all the challenges that we have faced in the last 14 months. NHE is strong. Since we gathered virtually as a company last fall, much has happened at NHE in our country to challenge us. As iron sharpens iron, so too has NHE gotten better and established us as an organization intent on building for the future. In the last year, NHE has made great strides to address a key criticism of our organization, the lack of internal communication. Through our monthly newsletters, periodic musings, refreshed branding, and marketing materials, ongoing public relations, and more consistent internal and external communications, we have come a long way in this area and now receive regular compliments. Our ability to produce and execute last fall's virtual conference rather than canceling it as so many companies did is another positive indicator. Our planning has advanced as well with the executive team holding monthly meetings and weekly calls to develop strategies for growth and excellence and our senior management team meeting twice annually to develop their skills and improve information flow across the organization. Our switch to Corsica Technologies was completed in September 2020 led by our IT team, Clifton Davis and Stephen Affey. The next phase of our IT investment will occur this summer by fully moving to the Office 365 platform and also implementing several cybersecurity measures. The long-term objectives are to upgrade our IT infrastructure and systems to have a more robust defense against cyber attacks that happen more and more frequently. All of these enhancements will better prepare NHE and our team as we build for the future. Many of these upcoming changes will not be noticeable by you, but others will be, so please do your best to embrace them. While COVID impacted our ability to address a key need, internal training and development, during 2020, the priority was never forgotten. We have added Lindsay McPhail to our HR team to manage efforts across business units in shaping a supportive and robust training and development program in the months to come and are excited about Lindsay's and our leadership team's ideas to improve overall training, especially with our maintenance teams. This will be a priority in the months to come. We continue to make progress on reducing employee turnover with a clear three-year downward trend in total turnover and especially with teammates employed for six months or less. We still have many miles to go in this area, but it remains a focus for our organization. Bamboo HR has also proven to be invaluable with the biannual employee surveys utilizing a net promoter score model. Since our first employee survey in August, 2018, 
we continue to gain improving participation and insightful learning from these surveys that is discussed at length by company leadership and is key in how we allocate resources. When we consolidated our three corporate offices into our new corporate home at the Summerell in early 2020, the changes to our accounting team were substantial. COVID didn't help our efforts to onboard new accounting team members and to further train the overall team. Led by VP of Finance Cindy Lawless and Assistant Controller Brandy Previtt, our accounting team is navigating these challenges to include more turnover than we'd like. We recently hired West Parton as our new controller and are focusing heavily on training of our entire accounting team over the rest of this year. Led by Robinson Villa, our development team is focused on affordable housing through the low income housing tax credit and continues to perform at a high level despite challenges from COVID. In tandem with our affordable property management team, they successfully delivered and leased up Linden Square in Gaffney, Parkside at Maine in Simpsonville, and more recently Parkside at Hudson in Gastonia, North Carolina. Our first experience in North Carolina for the development and affordable property management teams. We are under construction and or nearing completion at 550 Northside Station in Spartanburg, Renaissance Place in Greenville, and Parkside at Hickory Grove in Charlotte, North Carolina, all of which are expected to deliver this summer. We expect to begin construction on Parkside at Butler in Malden and Parkside at Verde Phase 2 in Greenville by early summer and are working on multiple projects in both North Carolina and South Carolina for 2022. Our HOA business unit led by VP Eric Cohorn has seen dramatic growth in communities under management, revenues generated, and team morale, going from the lowest business unit ENPS score in August 2018 to the highest last year. HOA's consistent new business growth in 2020 and early 2021 shows no signs of slowing down, and the team is focused on developing additional revenue streams to further improve profitability. Historically, NHE's largest business unit from a revenue and net income standpoint, our conventional business continues to thrive, led by VP Kelly Spencer. While experiencing the sale of several properties under management, the conventional group has new properties coming online at Waterleaf at Leland, Peachtree Village, Tribute Verde, and Encore at Merle's Inlet, with the likelihood of several additional properties in 2022 already in planning. Conventional continues to enjoy steady growth in unit count and revenues. Our service coordination business unit led by VP Patty Sherman has experienced a unique and challenging 15 months, largely due to COVID-19. This team provides social services, mostly to low-income seniors and persons with developmental disabilities, populations highly vulnerable to COVID-19. This team also is dispersed across the country, adding to its complexities. Still, this team continues to put resident needs often above their own, inspiring all of us as we learn more about their work and stories. Also led by Patty Sherman, our affordable property management team has seen explosive growth in all positive metrics. Long the second largest business unit in NHE, the gap has been closed with the conventional business unit. It is not certain which of the two business units will provide the most revenue and net income in 2021, which is exciting to see. This growth has come from three areas, substantial organic growth already described, significant growth with several key clients, and the addition of new clients coming to NHE due to our increased exposure and reputation in affordable housing circles. Among properties and markets added or soon to be added are Gable Oaks in Columbia and Philbin Creek in North Charleston, both ownership groups being first-time clients for the affordable business unit. Finally, the PPP loan NHE received in April 2020 as part of the CARES Act has been a true blessing during a difficult time for many, and under the direction of VP of Finance Cindy Lawless, we are awaiting final approval of its forgiveness application. And while NHE and our communities under management weathered the COVID-19 storm relatively unscathed, that storm is not over as impacts from the CDC moratorium on evictions 
finally come home to roost with many tenants. On another positive note, NHE has announced the resumption of the 401k employer match placed on hold when the uncertainty of COVID first began to hurt businesses across the country. The 401k employer match was reinstated January of this year. As we move into the final seven months of 2021, I am pleased with the state of NHE and I hope you are as well. 2020 was a year with no comparison and all those skies are brightening as vaccines become available to more people and hopefully things begin to return to normal, I expect there to be some bumps in the road. Still, I am as confident as I've ever been with the company leadership in light of how we have been tested these last 13 months. I am inspired by the work being done by so many of you on behalf of our company, customers, and residents. And I thank each and every one of you for all the hard work and dedication for helping us build for the future together and to improve homes and lives every day. Good morning, everyone. On behalf of the NHE Affordable Team, I am proud to present our honorees for the 2020-2021 Community Manager of the Year, the Maintenance Person of the Year, the Affordable Property of the Year, plus our GEM, Team Impact, and Customer Service Awards. In each of these categories, our honorees have demonstrated outstanding performance above and beyond that which might normally be expected. Let's start with the GEM Award for Affordable. The GEM Award reflects an individual who is positive, well-liked by colleagues, and has overcome major challenges while excelling at their duties. This person is a team player, will go to any property to help, whether it's a training a new person, assisting with lease-ups, or assisting with cleanups, this person always does it with a smile. The 2020-2021 GEM Award winner for Affordable is Ms. Debbie Allen, Community Manager at Trinity Apartments. The Team Impact Award promotes teamwork and brings parties together for a common goal. Honorees provide high quality performance, handle challenging situations and individuals and personify dependability. This year's honoree is always volunteering to help their teammates. She's always the last to leave and won't leave any task undone. She's an integral part of our affordable team and is willing to learn new things and then teach others what she's just learned. The 2020-2021 Team Impact Award winner for Affordable is Ms. Wanda Kane. The 2020-2021 Customer Service Award celebrates exceptional customer service, promotes community and teamwork, and delivers above and beyond the call of duty, even when no one is watching, then follows up to make certain that the customer's satisfied. This year's honoree is always available to help residents, cares about their needs and concerns, and will go the extra mile to help them to find resources in the community. She also has great relationships with her vendors and staff and helps at other properties when needed. The 2020-2021 Customer Service Award winner for Affordable is Ms. Sandra Daly, Community Manager of Oakmont Place Apartments in Greenwood, South Carolina. Next, let's honor our Community Manager of the Year. The Community Manager of the Year consistently demonstrates exceptional performance above what might reasonably be expected. They exceed financial objectives by 5% or more, and they have successful owner, corporate, and regulatory agency inspections. They consistently exhibit superior curb appeal, and they promote community and teamwork among staff and colleagues. This year's honoree has been with NHE for many, many years and has consistently demonstrated her passion for helping people. She goes above and beyond for her residents and takes excellent care of her community she oversees. The 2020-2021 Community Manager of the Year for Affordable is Debbie Robinson of Carolina Place in Rock Hill, South Carolina. Next, let's honor our Maintenance Professional of the Year. The Maintenance Professional of the Year demonstrates exceptional performance above what might be expected reasonably for their job. They exceed budget and financial objectives by 5% or greater. They have successful owner, corporate, and regulatory agency inspections. They consistently exhibit superior curb appeal, and they promote community and teamwork among staff and colleagues. 
This year's honoree really gets a chance to sit down and is always going from one property to the next, taking on assignments. He does his job with an excellent attitude and a sense of humor. He's very dependable and knowledgeable. We are lucky to have this person on our team. The 2020-2021 Maintenance Professional of the Year for Affordable is Taman Fryer. Finally, let's honor our Affordable Property of the Year. The Affordable Property of the Year demonstrates exceptional performance above what might be reasonably expected for their property. They exceed their budget and financial objectives. They have successful owner, corporate, and regulatory agency inspections. They consistently exhibit superior curb appeal, and they promote community and teamwork amongst staff, residents, and colleagues. This year's property has always been well-maintained, and people do not realize that this is an affordable community. The resident staff take pride in the community to ensure that it's always looking its best. The property has always been an NHE showcase property. The 2020-2021 Affordable Property of the Year is Amelia Village in Orangeburg, South Carolina. Congratulations to all of these honorees. The entire NHE team is proud of you. Wow, what a way to start the day. We've got over 400 people tuned in right now. Congrats again to our first group of NHE award winners. And thanks to all of our sponsors who make this incredible event possible, especially the fine folks at Green Impact, DOZ, Landrum HR, Right Rug, and Reeves Construction. We are now going to take our first break. It's just a few minutes, so don't go far. When we return, you'll hear from an incredible man, Craig Cargis, an award-winning entertainer who combines the art of magic with the power of intuition to convey that nothing, absolutely nothing, is impossible. Now, some of you will even get a chance to participate in Craig's presentation via the power of Zoom. Take this brief time to freshen up your coffee, chat to win a prize, and add a photo. Definitely check out our exhibitors, many of whom also have prizes to award. Fill up your passport by visiting the exhibit hall, and you can even win more prizes. Then come on back to hear from Craig Cargis and lift your day with this incredible message. We'll be back in about five minutes. We'll see you shortly. For all the supplies your multifamily apartment community will ever need, turn to Chadwell Supply. From electrical and HVAC to plumbing, pools, and irrigation, Chadwell Supply is the partner you need. Visit chadwellsupply.com. For pest, termite, and mosquito control, plus disinfection services you can count on, turn to the professionals at Gregory Pest Solutions. Residential or commercial, we have you covered. Check us out at smarterpestcontrol.com. At HD Supply, we always start with our customers in mind. Turn to us for the facilities maintenance, construction, and industrial products you need, where and when you need them. Rely on HD Supply on the web at hdsupply.com.
Congratulations to our affordable team winners. And let's give out some prizes, Nicole. That Yay! Sounds, I think that sounds like a great idea. Yeah. All right. So we're going to start off with a few random winners that we've randomly selected. So the first prize that we have is a fire tablet made by Amazon. This winner is going to be Shanika Thompson. Yay. The next prize that we have is a smart light kit like this, and that prize goes to Andrea Glover. And then we also have a $50 Walmart gift card going to Margaret Idols. Congratulations. Yay, congratulations. Welcome back. Craig Carter's presentation is fabulous. And you now get to hear and see him firsthand. Let's get ready for our next segment. Craig will lead us off, followed by a powerful video, two important sets of NHE employee awards, and a very important HR and training update from Caroline Calder, Lindsay McPhail, and the team. Now keep that chat flowing. Peek in at the exhibitors when you get a chance and keep uploading those photos to win those prizes. Now let's get started with our next segment. Good morning, everybody. 
It's a pleasure to be with you to help you celebrate your past as you build for your future. My name is Craig Cargus, and I'm hopefully in these times we can't all be together in person. It doesn't mean that we still can't have an extraordinary shared experience. And that's what I hope to give you this morning. Now, in order for this to work, we usually work live and in person. So developing a way to do this presentation through the computer and through the internet has been a fascinating journey since last spring. Uh, but what we decided on, and this is all happening live in real time, there are no, there's nothing's being recorded and there's no pre-recorded segments. So mistakes and everything will be yours to see <laughs> as the presentation unfolds. But what we asked the production team to do and NHE management to do was select a team of people for me to work with. And those people have joined in the, on the webinar. They are panelists. And in order for this to work, uh, we need their cooperation and their imagination. So I want, to, I want everybody to be able to see our, our panelists, our volunteer pool. So if you guys will turn your cameras on, you can stay muted for right now, but if you can turn your cameras on, I would appreciate it. And we have Alex who is working on the production team and Alex is, uh, he's going to choose some of the people that we actually work with. And to get started, I wanna show you this. Five numbers, five three digit numbers, 102, 317, 326, 983, and 759. They total 2,487. Now in a second, we're gonna have a couple of our panelists volunteers rearrange these numbers and create new numbers. And the decisions that they make will create the future. But before we get started, I wanna point something out. This is the future. So Alex, if we can have, um, if you, I'll let, just let you choose. If you can choose any of our, we have six people um, as part of the gallery. If you can choose uh, any two of those people, we'll work with them to get started. And again, the, the people in the gallery are volunteers. I'd like you to leave your cameras on the entire time so that I can see your face and interact with you. We have, uh, oh, we have a couple already. So we have, is that um, Ash Ashana? Yes. And Mackenzie. So we have a Sean and Mackenzie. If you guys could turn, if you could unmute, if Alex, if you let them unmute, I'll meet them and we'll talk with them and we'll get underway. So how are you two doing? Doing great. It's Friday. It's Friday, <laughs> right. So uh, Shauna and Mackenzie, you two are going to be our first volunteers. I'd like everybody else to get their cameras on too as well, but we'll just leave uh, Mackenzie and Ashana unmuted for right now. So you guys are going to make some decisions. And again, your decisions are going to create a future. So Ashana, the first thing I want you to do is look at this first number, 102. And I want you to choose one of those numbers, either one, zero, or two. Which one would you like? Let's do two. The two. Okay, so I'm going to move the two over here. And Ashana, you'll verify. We have never spoken or met before. You had, I don't know if you volunteered for this or you were just hijacked into <laughs> doing it, <laughs> but you have no idea what you're doing, right? Until, until this very moment in time. Perfect. Now, Mackenzie, same thing. You're going to look at the second number, which is 317, and you're going to choose one of those numbers, either three, one, or seven. I'll pick seven. Seven. Okay, so we'll move the seven over here. And then, Shauna, we'll go back to you. 326 is the next number. What do you want? Three, two, or six? Six. Six. And, Mackenzie, back to you. Uh, 983, which would you like? I'll do eight. Eight is the highest number. You notice different things about these numbers as well. Uh, all the even numbers are green and they're easier to see. The odd numbers are yellow, more difficult to see. Ashana, 759, which would you like? Seven. Seven. So you guys just created a random new number based on the choices that I gave you, the opportunities that you had. You created 27,687. We're going to do that one more time. This kind of takes a little bit of time because we're waiting for people to come back from the bathroom break. Uh, so let's go, let's go back to, Ashana gave me the last one, yes? Yes. Let's go back to Mackenzie. Mackenzie, you want one or zero? I'll do zero. Zero. Now, see, that's an unusual choice because you know what we're doing. We're forming numbers over here. So now you know that that number uh, will make this a four-digit number instead of a five-digit number. Most people do not do that, uh, Mackenzie. And I, I could tell you why you did that from a psychological standpoint, but you don't want to know. Okay. Um, so then, uh, Shauna, three and one, which would you like? Let's do three. Three, okay. And back to you, Mackenzie, three and two, which would you like? I'll do three as three. well. All right. And uh, Shauna, back to you, we have a nine and a three? Nine. So a lot of threes, you finally broke the mold. And then Mackenzie, five and nine, which would you like? Five. Five, okay. And then that leaves the remaining numbers, which we'll just fill in the blanks here. So we have 11,000. 230 
nine. Now, if anybody has a calculator, you can add these up and make sure I'm right. I'm going to do it old school, which can kind of be embarrassing, again, since this is all done live. But follow <laughs> along with me. Uh, we have a 7 and 5, which is 12, and a 9, which is 21. Is that right? Yes? I'm going to carry the 2 up here. 8 and 2 is 10, and then that's 19, and then that's 22. Carry the 2 again. Uh, 6 and 2 is 8, and then that 3 is 9, 10, 11, and then 12, 13. Yes? Carry the 1. So 7 and 1 is 8, and then 3 is 11, and then 1 is 12. Carry the one again. So two and one is three. Zero, Mackenzie, um, is just zero. And then one <laughs> more is four. So 42,321. That's the number you guys created based on your choices and based on your decisions, correct? And again, we correct. never met or talked. I had no, you had no idea what I was going to ask you to do. But this is the number you created, 42,321. And before we started, I said that you're going to create the future by your decisions. And I said that this was the future, 42,321. Yahtzee. <laughs> That's 42,321. Wow. <laughs> now, the interesting thing about this is you're influenced. I tried to influence you. I really did. I tried to influence you by the numbers that I, that I presented to you, the colors that were involved, even the way I spoke to you. Uh, but you're influenced by all sorts of things. You're even influenced by the day because it's April. Oh, God. The fourth month of the year. It's <laughs> April 23rd and it's 2021. Wow. That's neat. What? <laughs> <laughs> so, hopefully, this morning, hopefully, this morning, you're going to see some impossible looking things. But I really want to challenge you the fact that nothing is truly impossible. Anything is possible. And we do have the ability to create the future through our decisions, our actions, and our beliefs. So let's meet a couple more of our panelists. Um, you guys can mute yourselves, and then we'll go to uh, I mean, who is paying attention. <laughs> is everybody paying attention? Uh, I'll let uh, um, I'll let Alex. Why don't you choose somebody else? Who do you want? To, who do you want to work with? Or we could just work down the line. We can go with uh, let's go with Alicia. Alicia, how you doing? Could you unmute? Is Alicia unmuted? No. Okay. <laughs> we'll go to. We'll try. We'll give Dennis a. We'll give Dennis a chance. Uh, Dennis, can you? Hey, oh, Alicia's on. Okay. Hey, Alicia. And this hey. is further, this is again further proof that we have nothing set up or prearranged. We're not even <laughs> sure exactly how to work the technology. Okay, Alicia, you were watching uh, this this previous demonstration, right? Yes. Yes. And I tried to scramble your brain with numbers. So um, is there any way, Alex, that we can leave me spotlit and add a spotlight with Alicia so that they can see on the main screen, we can see both of us at the same time, if we have add spotlight on Alicia as an option? And if not, that's OK. But I'm just curious. Apparently not. So Alicia, what I want you to do now is just to name, a, um, name any two-digit number. Uh, 32. 32. Now, Alicia, do, do you know why you chose that number? No. <laughs> no. So it just kind of, it just kind of popped into your mind. Yes. As I was talking to you, I was looking at this pack of cards and on this pack of cards, on the back of it is a post-it note. And on that post-it note is a two digit number. And that two digit number is 32. Oh my God. Let's try something else. Do you play cards at all, Alicia? Um, no, not well. <laughs> okay. Just keep me, because I want, I want to make sure that everyone sees that I stay on camera, Alex. So just keep me on this, and we can see. Uh, I can talk to Alicia up in the gallery there, since we're only uh, six spots in the gallery anyway. I can see everybody at one time. Is this, I think this will work better. Alicia, um, you, don't, you said you don't play cards very well, right? Correct. Okay. I want you to um, give me... Uh, you, you know that cards have got to be one of two colors. They have to be red or they have to be black. So yes. I want you to give me a color. What color would you like, red or black? Red. Red. Now, I'm telling you, I have a target card here. There's a special card inside this pack of cards, and you think that that card is red. I want you now to give me, if it is red, if you're right, 
It has to be either a heart or a diamond. Which do you believe it is? A diamond. A diamond. Okay. Now, if it's a diamond, there are 13 values of every suit. So they start, you can think of it as starting at the ace or ending at the ace, but it could ace, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and then the court cards, which are the jack, the queen, and the king. Alicia, what I want you to do now is just to name a value. Anything from the ace through the king or the from the two through the ace, however you want to think about it. I just need a value from you for this diamond that you believe is in. Uh, an eight. An eight. So the eight of diamonds, not the ace of diamonds, but the eight of diamonds. Eight, correct. Mm -hmm. All right, now this is interesting because I said that I had one card. It was a target card inside this pack of cards. And I replaced one card, pulled it out, turned it back in. So there'd be only card reversed in the pack of cards. Now, normally if you were just to ask somebody to name a card, they would say the queen of hearts, the ace of spades. Those are the two most common. But because of the way I ask you those questions, we came into a very random card. And that card was the eight of diamonds. One card reversed in the pack. And that card oh is the eight gosh. of diamonds. <laughs> very good, Alicia. You're excellent. <laughs> That's so cool. <laughs> Now, I want to try, we have, uh, we have our volunteer pool of six. I want to take you back in time. I mean, you guys are uh, corporate headquarters in South Carolina. I want to take you back in time to the 1930s in North Carolina and Duke University. That is where the first real American research in ESP happened. And they d developed a deck of cards. They were called Zenner cards. Five different cards repeated 25 times each, or five times each, to create a deck of 25 cards. And those symbols were these. They were circle, a uh, star, three wavy lines, a square, and a plus sign. And it repeated five times each in the pack, 25 cards. You'd take the, the deck of cards and you would shuffle it. And then someone would look at a card and concentrate on it and try to send it to somebody else. And that would demonstrate uh, mind reading or telepathy. Or someone would write down the order they thought the cards would be, be in. And then someone else would shuffle the cards. And then they would check the order, the shuffled order, after it was shuffled. And that would test precognition or foretelling the future. I'm going to try something with all of you. And these, this is for people, not only for our panelists, but everybody watching from your home or your home office as well, or your office. I want all of you to try this, especially our panelists, because one of you is actually going to take this one step farther. But as you look at these five signs, the circle, the star, three wavy lines, and the square and the plus sign, I'm going to tell you that I'm thinking of one of them. And I'm trying to send them that particular sign, that one sign. I'm trying to send it to all of you. So I just want you to look over the signs and whichever one appeals to you. You should have a little feeling about something and you should choose that sign. I want each of you to choose a sign now. So just as you look over the five choices, I just want you to choose a sign. Just lock one in your mind. I'll give you a second. Now, the symbol I had in mind was the star. So did we get any of the six panelists who hit on the star, who thought of the star? If you did, just raise your hand. We can see. Is that Dan? Well, oh, we'll get, look at that. We have three, I mean, half of you out of the six. You would expect, um, you expect maybe one or two. So we, we ended up with three. So that's good. That's a good sign. So Dennis, since I saw your hand first, would you unmute? And we'll take this one step further. How you doing, Dennis? Did we lose Dennis? Is he on? Mackenzie's back. Oh, you hear me now? Oh, there we go. Perfect. Thank you, sir. Um, Dennis, I have a duplicate set of cards here. All I'm going to do is look at these and you're going to tell me what I'm looking at. Uh, the three Dennis, I'm looking line. at a symbol right now. What do you think it is? Do you think it's the plus sign, the, the square, three wavy lines, the star, or the circle? Say the three wavy lines. You think it's three wavy lines. Now, I'm going to give you an opportunity, Dennis, that they would have never given you at Duke University. And that is to change your mind if you want. No, I'm not going to ask you to change your mind. I am going to give you an opportunity to check to see if you were correct. Do you want to see if you were correct or you just want to go on with the other four guesses? Uh, so we can go on. You want to go on? Okay. Yes. I'm looking at another one. What do you think it is? Circle. Circle. So you are pretty confident in your choices, Dennis. Yes? You're a pretty confident person? Uh, yes. Yes. Okay, Dennis, what's this? Uh, 
The um, the star. The star. Now that was the most hesitation you've given. Yes. Keep that in mind. So I'm going to give you another option in a second. I have two left. What do you think this is? Let's go to plus sign. Plus sign. You're very confident on that. That means that's the square. Yes? Now, yes. here's something else they wouldn't let you do at Duke University. I'm going to let you change your mind, uh, but only for one. In other words, you, you would have to switch two, uh, but you can just leave it as it is if you really feel that confident in your decision. So in other words, you can, you can make one change by swapping two of them out or you can just leave it just as it is. Dennis, it's your choice. What would you like to do? Uh, so we can leave it. You're gonna leave it, okay. Yes. It's that confidence, it's coming through. Never leave <laughs> What was the first, the first one you did with the three wavy lines, right? Correct. That was your first guess. And you did not want to see if you were right or not. <laughs> but you were right. So that's one for one, Dennis. Now. Um, if you just do a run of five cards, you're expected to get one right. That's why I, was, I thought it was great that we had three people hit the one out of five that I was thinking of a second ago. It shows that you're extraordinary. So this would be average just to get one right. But you already know you have one right. And you already know, Dennis, that you are far above average. <laughs> wow. That's three out of five. Now, this was the one you were least sure of. And I gave you a choice to make a change if you wanted, but you decided not to. Which was a good thing because you have all five correct. <laughs> Round of applause for Dennis. We can see you. I wow. appreciate it. You can do this if you want. There's extraordinary job, Dennis. <laughs> The um, do you, I tell you, there was a couple of things. Um, you one of the things I miss and still miss because we, we're still not allowed to do it in very many places is going to movies, seeing films. And I don't know if any of you feel that way, uh, but I do. I miss going to the theater. I'm a big James Bond nerd, and uh, No Time to Die was the is the 25th James Bond movie, the fifth one with Daniel Craig, and the last one for him to be 007. And I think it's been postponed like three or four times. Um, it was supposed to be out again in April of this year, like right now, this month, and it was postponed again to October. It was supposed to be out last November, and it was the first major release that uh, that was postponed. It was a big, big announcement, first major release to be postponed. And I, so I'm sitting here waiting for it to, to come out uh, last year. It didn't get the announcement. And people were told, like, when you're, when you're sheltering in place, when you're quarantined, do you really use that time to do something beneficial? I mean, you can, um, you, you can take online courses, you can learn a second language, you can learn to cook, you can do all sorts of things. I did pick up a, a new talent during quarantine, and I want to show it to you now. And I'm going to combine this new talent with my affection for film. Now, I have to apologize in advance because this takes a little bit of time, not much, but it takes a little bit of time to create. And you will see the end result at the very end of this. Now, the folds are as important as the cuts. And the problem with this is that I never know exactly what this will look like until the very end. Now, who have we not worked with? We've not worked with Catherine and we've not worked with Diane, correct? So let's just go down, let's just go down the list and let's, uh, since Catherine, you were, as I looked at it, you were near Dennis. So why don't I work with you? If you'll unmute Catherine, I'll make some finishing touches on here. Now I talked about my love of, of films and going to the movies and I like the popcorn movies. Um, I'm not like a major film buff. Ah, shoot. Might be a little rough, but um, I'll show you the end results of this in a second. Uh, for right now, it's just going to go under my watch band so you can see it. So, Catherine, how are you today? Good morning. I'm fine. Um, are you, do you like film? Do you like movies? Yes, sir. Okay, so what I've done is collected 20 names of the, of the highest paid movie stars in the world. So even if you're not a big movie fan, you should still recognize these people. And I'm just going to show them to you quickly. That's Tom Hanks. Uh, this is Tom Cruise, uh, Brad Pitt, Mark Wahlberg, Jennifer Lawrence. Yes, Jennifer Lawrence. Yes. Um, Leonardo DiCaprio, 
Chris Hemsworth. Now, some of these people, you might, a lot of these people are Marvel characters, like uh, Chris Hemsworth is Thor in the Marvel movies, so that's why there's some of the highest paid people. Melissa McCarthy, uh, Johnny Depp, Dwayne The Rock Johnson, actually Dwayne The Rock Johnson, the highest paid movie star in the world. Uh, Jennifer Aniston, George Clooney, Chris Evans, uh, Angelina Jolie, Robert Downey Jr., Will Smith, Scarlett Johansson, Vin Diesel, uh, Julia Roberts, and Adam Sandler, believe it or not. So those are the uh, 20 top paid film stars in the world right now. And I want you, Catherine, to, to make some decisions. I'm going to mix these up, and then I'm just going to split them roughly in half. So I'll hold half the cards in my right hand, half the cards in my left hand, and you will eliminate half. So you get to choose a hand as to which card you want me to continue to continue to be in play and the other cards I'll sit down and I'll, we'll make sure you understand completely when you make your decision. But this is my right hand and this is my left hand. So Catherine, you choose which cards do you want me to continue to, to use and which ones do you want me to put down? Use the ones in your right hand and dis and the ones in your left hand you can get rid of. Okay, so this is my left hand. All Correct. these cards, all these names are now going away Gone. and we're using the cards in my right hand. All right, Correct. I'm going to mix them up a little bit more. And again, I'll separate them once again into about two equal piles. And you again, Catherine, get the choice. Which ones do you want me to keep in play and which would you like me to discard? Keep the ones on your right, get rid of the ones in your left. Okay, that's what you said last time too, right? I know, but... So that's okay. I just want to make sure. So we're keeping these in my right hand yes. and we're getting rid of these. These are now yes. gone. Now, all I'm going to do is take the remaining cards. And I'm going to transfer them one at a time from top to bottom like this, Catherine. And then you're okay. going to tell me when to stop. Stop. Okay. You want to write on the card that I'm on, yes? Yes. Okay. Now, I'll show you that card. Show it to camera. It's Tom Cruise. <gasps> okay. Now, you had no idea that you stopped me on Tom Cruise, right? No. But you had, uh, this, is, this is, the next card was Chris Hemsworth. And then we had Will Smith and uh, Melissa McCarthy and, and Robert Downey Jr., or yes, Robert Downey Jr. and the choices, the, just the decisions that you make to get us down to Tom Cruise, which was a random choice. You had a little bit of a reaction there, which is maybe because you like Tom Cruise. I don't know. It just seemed like there was a surprise. No, it was just one of the names I remembered. <laughs> That's one of the names you remembered. Okay. So you're familiar with Tom Cruise. Yes. And you know what he looks like. Yes. Now, I said before we started that I had picked up a new um, a talent of sorts over quarantine back last spring, a year ago. And I showed you the creation process, but I didn't show you the final result. This is the final result. And I get very nervous about this. I think I said this once, but I get very nervous about this because I never know exactly what this will look like. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Does that look like Tom Cruise? Yes, it does. Too funny. Good choice. <laughs> I have one last demonstration for you because my, the idea here was to create a connection with all of you as you're watching this. And um, I have one last thing. We can use up to four people for this. So we've not worked with Diane yet at all, right, Diane? So let's work. Uh, let, let's choose our four people first. So let's go with um, Diane. You'll definitely be in. And then let's go back to Dennis and uh, Alicia and, and let Catherine, you did so well and we waited so long for you. Uh, let's, let's work with the four of you. So it's Diane, Catherine, Dennis and Alicia and you guys can all unmute now if you'd like. And we will start with Diane. You're gonna start us off. Another thing that I, that I miss, not only going to theater, there used to be uh, the thing I disliked most about my job was the travel, was flying. Uh, in January, February of, um, of last year, of 2020, I flew 30,000 miles. I was in oh. like um, six different countries, and I've flown over a million miles on Delta and American and probably another million on United and the rest of the airlines that are still around and the ones that have disappeared. Um, but I, and I, when I quit traveling for in-person dates, I really thought I wouldn't miss the travel, but I, I do. I kind of miss the travel. And so that's just another aspect of my life that's changed. Uh, this is a luggage tag that I used to use. It hasn't seen a lot of action lately, but it's yellow. So you could spot it when the bag came off, uh, bag came down the baggage claim. 
And it's, um, and you can see it during this demonstration because that's important too. It'll just stay here. And I'll tell you at the outset, it belongs to somebody, but it belongs to an imaginary person. It belongs to me technically, but it also belongs to an imaginary person. But it's a person that some of you know. Let me show you what I mean. Um, Diane, we will start with you. Diane, I want you to think of a, the first name of somebody that, that you know, somebody that you have a connection with, someone you have a connection with. It could be a family member, could be a friend, could be a childhood friend, but just the first name of somebody you know. And just give that to me. Sheila. What was it? Sheila. Sheila. Now, Sheila is, what's, what's the relationship with Sheila? Friend. Okay. Now, uh, so we have Sheila, and then I want you to give me uh, another name. It could be a name that you thought of before you went with Sheila, or it could be um, it could be just another name you come up with, as long as it's a connection to you. So give me one more name. Cindy. Cindy. Okay. And is that another friend? Boss. Your boss. Okay. We'll label that then as this person's name. And we will go to, who else is playing? Catherine, we'll go back to you. Catherine, you need to come up with a, a birth date. Um, but I want you to pick, I don't know how, you need to think of it just as a month, day, and year. I don't want it to be your birth date. I don't want it to be a birth date of someone you know, but I want it to be a combination of things. Uh, like it could be the, the, the day you were born on, like I was born December 5th, so the, it could be the number five. And then it could be the month that, um, that your friend, uh, your friend was born in, or uh, and then the year that you were married, or something like that. Three distinct pieces of information, month, day, and year, that have some kind of a connection to you, because it has to be a personal connection back to you. Do you understand what I mean? Yes. Okay. So give me a month, a day, and a year. So August thirty first, nineteen forty six. Nineteen forty six. Okay. August 31st, 1946. Now, do you mind, um, well, do you, do you mind revealing what, what each of those things mean to you? Um, so August is, um, so this is one person's birthday. Is that what you're saying? Right. That we're thinking? Well, okay. yeah, it's a combination of things. So, okay, so August was my husband's birthday. Okay. Um, the 31st is a cousin's date of her birthday. Perfect. And then 1946 is when my husband was born. All right. So, so, a so lot, I just kind of put different combinations. A lot tied back to your husband, but then also with the different date in between. Okay. That's, yes. That's good. And uh, the, the two people that we have left, who else is playing? Dennis was playing, right? Are you playing? Yes. Yes. Uh, Dennis, do you have your phone handy? Uh, yes. And can you pull up your contact list on your phone? All right. And um, I'll get back to you in a second. And Ashana, are you there? Yes. Mm -hmm. Ashana, I want you to give me the name of a city, a town, um, something that has meaning to you. It could be where you have family. It could be a place you visited. It could be a place you always wanted to go. But just a city, town, anywhere in the world. Denver. Denver. Colorado. Got it. Okay. And what's your connection to Denver? I want to visit. You want to visit. So you've, not, you've never been to Denver? No. Okay, well, you will. Okay, Dennis, are you ready? Yes. Dennis, just scroll through your contacts. You know, just scroll okay. through and just stop anywhere. And let me know once you stop. All right, stop. Okay, give me the area code of the phone number that you're on, the person that you've landed on, the area code of their phone number. It's um, 248. 248. And who is that person or what is that relationship to you? Can you tell us or no? You don't have uh, Yes, he's a cousin. Okay, scroll, just scroll again and stop anywhere you want. All right. And give me the next three digits from this person's number. You know, the three digits after the area code, the exchange. Um, 354. 354. And who's this number belong to? Um, a cousin. Another cousin? Okay. Yes. Big fan. Get all your cousins. I don't even, <laughs> I don't even know my cousins. Okay, I'll just scroll, <laughs> scroll again and stop somewhere else. All right. Okay. And give me the uh, last four digits of this person's number, of this uh, cousin's phone number. <laughs> 3656. 
3656, 3656, right? Correct, yes. Okay, uh, and who, who is this person? It's a friend. A friend, okay. Yeah. <laughs> a friendly cousin. A cousin this time. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> All right. Um, now, this is the interesting part. This is the information that you gave me, right? And this is made up. Let me turn this light on so you can see a bit easier. Uh, this is the information you gave me. Uh, Sheila Cindy, uh, August 31st, 1946, hometown of Denver, and that phone number, thanks to Dennis's cousin. Now, <laughs> and, his, and his one friend. Now, this has been on plain view the entire time. And I said that it belonged to somebody. And I said it belonged to a person, but imaginary person, but a per person that you knew in some sense. Oh, well. No way. That's impossible. I'm going to bring this in. I hope you can see this. Can you see it? There's that no way. Sheila oh my gosh. Cindy. <laughs> yes. That's a trick. <laughs> it's Sheila Cindy, your friend, August 31st, 1946, from Denver, Colorado, 248 354 3656. That's just that's your imaginary track. It is crazy. <laughs> yeah. Real quick, real quick before I leave you this morning, I just want to leave you with some food for thought. You know, it's been said that we only use 10, 20% of our minds. And I think a lot of it's even less than that. So the next time someone asks you, is it possible to take a thought and to send it from one person to another without saying anything? Is it possible to predict the future? Or more importantly, for you right here, right now today, is it possible for you to take full advantage of all the networking and educational opportunities you have here and create the future, your future, future of your communities and the future of NHE? Is it possible for you to continue to grow and build on your amazing 50-year history, but grow by building better, smarter, and working as a team to reach the next level? Is it possible for you to continue to help your communities succeed and families prosper by improving homes and lives every day? And is it possible for you to be so outstanding in your field that you receive the Golden Hammer or NHE Harris Davis Award in Excellence or your property is named Property of the Year? And to do all this as you continue to offer superior service and capitalize on your vast experience, dedication, relationships, and investments in technology, training, and certification as you all work together, building for an inherently better future. Again, it was my honor to be with you today. I hope you enjoyed it. Hope you have a fantastic day. And I hope we get a chance to meet in person one day. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. A key pivotal part of my life was deploying and leading soldiers on the ground in Iraq, engaging with cultures who I had no understanding of. That kind of opened my eyes. What inspired me to join Best Buy is my uncle was a GM, the first black GM for the company, actually. When I started working for Best Buy and what mattered a lot to me is being able to feel comfortable in my skin and who I was. I think diversity is vital. I think it's not only important, I think it's vital for growth. Building this inclusive environment where each of us can bring our full selves to work, I think is the absolute foundation of who we are as a company. If we hire people from all walks of life, uh, from different upbringings, uh, they'll be able to keep ideas flowing through our company. The work is more rich when you have different people contributing. Diversity comes from more than just race or color. It also comes in age. It comes from affiliation. It comes in status. I'm talking about diversity of thought, diversity of gender. It's really just being having the courage to have a conversation where we can be on different sides. Let's respect each other's side and so we can understand where we come from. The thing that I like the most of what you said is to respectfully challenge people. I'm, I'm optimistic, but it's 
It's going to take work mm -hmm. and time and commitment on your part, on my part. I think we'll know that we finally made it because uh, we won't have to talk about it anymore. <laughs> when you can just walk into a store and see it, when you can walk into an office and see it, I think that's when you know that we have gotten to a place where we need to. Let's talk about what's possible. If we get this right, let's imagine the kind of company we can build. Are we going to make this happen? Absolutely. Let's go make this happen. I love it. Good morning, everyone. On behalf of the NHE conventional team, I am proud to present our awards for 2020. 2021. Let's begin. The Jim Award. This employee went above and beyond our expectations on a continual basis. She's at one of our more difficult properties and she stepped up when needed, worked late hours, and always got the job done. She overcame all the obstacles this property threw at her in 2020. Congratulations to our Jim Award winner, Carly Creech. Thank you for all you do for NHE and Barry Schultz. Amazing job. Next, our customer service award goes to someone that had the most leases in 2020. Leasing 235 apartments, she displays outstanding customer service with her residents, prospects, vendors, and coworkers. She shows up to work on a daily basis with a smile on her face, ready to face the day. Congratulations to Kristen Summers, our customer service award winner. Thank you and way to go in 2020. Next is our team impact award. This lady does anything that is asked of her. I can change her schedule three times in a week and she won't even blink an eye. She helps, trains, and fills in when needed. She has filled in as acting manager on three properties this year when we were short staffed. Our Team Impact Award winner is Brittany Kelly. Thank you. Our Community Manager of the Year moved to a new city, took on a property that had been struggling, and turned it around. She was just promoted to a multi-site manager and is over two properties. She is outstanding in everything she does. Our community manager of the year is Tracy Hubbard. Thank you for all that you do for NHE. Now let's honor our maintenance professional of the year. This gentleman continues to look for ways to improve his property. He helps around the Asheville market whenever asked. He takes projects in-house and completes them. He always has a smile on his face while he is at working. Congratulations to Brad Munden, our maintenance professional of the year. Thank you for all that you do for NHE. Last, but certainly not least, let's honor our conventional property of the year. This property had its ups and downs in 2020, but through it all exceeded all budgeted expectations. This team goes above and beyond every day and is well-deserving of this honor. Conventional property of the year goes to Parkway Crossing. What a year, thank you. Congratulations to all these honorees. The entire NHE team is proud of you. Welcome to the second virtual NHE employee conference. Before we go over our HR updates, we just wanna take a moment and say hello. And we wanted to do a quick introduction to our newest member of our HR team, Lindsay. Thanks, Caroline. I am so excited to be back at NHE in a new role focusing on training. NHE is such a great company to work for and I'm excited to work with all of you. Everyone should be so proud of what was accomplished in this past year during the pandemic with work from home life, wearing masks and changes in the office. Yes, that's right, Lindsay, and things are looking up. We just completed our COVID vaccine clinic with the help from our service department to get many of our staff vaccinated. I know we are all looking forward to getting back to normal soon. So Caroline, what's new? I see you and Blake have been working really hard and the lots of new faces are in bamboo. Yes, there's always lots of exciting things happening in HR. Now, let's get started on our HR update.
Let's start with our benefits overview. New hires, full-time employees, 30 hours or more a week are eligible first of the month following 60 days. Open enrollment is in April for coverage starting in May, and we've just completed our open enrollment for this year. Qualifying events, the plan allows changes within 30 days of a qualifying event, such as a birth of a child, loss of coverage, marriage, et cetera. 401k is with Slavic. All employees, both full-time and part-time, 18 years or older, are eligible to participate in the 401k plan after six months of service at the first calendar quarter. There is an employer match 100% for the first 3% and 50% on the next 2%. If you have questions regarding your benefits, please contact HR at NHE or at Landrum Benefits Team. Now let's move on to our medical plans. We currently have three medical plans. We have a new high deductible healthcare plan that we offer this year at no cost to employee only coverage, as well as our two uh, previous plans that we offered last year that are a high deductible healthcare plan and a PPO plan. We also offer dental plans with two options and a vision plan. Now let's move on to our ancillary coverages. We offer voluntary group term life through MetLife, and we also offer 100% employer paid group life, short-term disability and long-term disability all through the principal. Another way NHE shows how much we care about our employees is that we offer all our employees, full-time and part-time, a free and confidential employee assistance program. This program allows up to three free counseling visits to you or anyone in your household that may need it. And that's not all. Blake, tell them more about the ways you can earn some extra money. We offer an amazing employee referral program where you can earn $250 if you refer a candidate to NHE and we hire them. Show me the money. Here are the employees this year that have received an employee referral bonus. Thank you to all who have referred folks to us. Keep up the great referrals. Hi, this is Ellen Clement in the payroll department. It is time to talk about one of my favorite topics, payroll. Hopefully everyone here also enjoys payroll to some extent as it results in paychecks. Let's get started. I will cover our information in three main categories, timekeeping and wage and hour policies, paid time off and important payroll items. Timekeeping and wage and hour policies. Our work week runs Thursday to Wednesday. Your work schedule will be documented on your TOEN form. One hour unpaid lunch is recommended. However, if you work at a site with two employees, please ensure coverage at all times. Timekeeping must be recorded daily via swipe clock or web clock. Please note any variances in your schedule in the notes section of the electronic time card. Any hours worked in excess of 40 in a work week will be paid overtime, which is paid at a rate of 1.5 times the regular rate for non-exempt employees. All overtime must be approved in advance by supervisor. All overtime work must be recorded. Always verify the correct location is listed on your time card. Make certain the time you work matches the time that is on your time card. Never allow another employee or person to clock in and out for you. Additionally, never let anyone else approve your time card for you. And finally, review your time card daily and make notes on your time card if edits are made. PTO for full-time employees can be used for bereavement, jury duty, vacation, sick time, personal days, inclement weather, natural disasters, disability elimination periods, and workers' comp waiting periods. Employees accrue PTO and are eligible to use it after a 90-day introductory period. Any approved time taken before is generally unpaid. PTO is not accrued while on leave of absence, but must be taken during waiting periods for short-term disability or workers' compensation benefits. 162 PTO hours can be carried over to the beginning of the new year. However, anything over 160 hours is lost. 
PTO is not paid out at termination of employment unless a two-week notice period is provided and worked. PTO is not paid out for involuntary separations or if an employee is in still an introductory period. Negative PTO balance at termination of employment can be deducted from employee's final paycheck. Full-time employees, those that work 30 hours or more, and part-time employees, those that work 16 hours or more, are eligible for holiday pay if the holiday falls on a regularly scheduled workday and the employee worked the day before and the day after the holiday unless using pre-approved PTO. PTO requests are made through Bamboo HR and then synced with Swipe Clock. All requests should be made prior to taking PTO or the day upon returning if you are unable to schedule PTO in advance. All PTO entries in Swipe Clock should have a note detailing which location the PTO is for. And finally, important payroll items. Payroll is paid on the 15th and the end of every month via direct deposit. If that day falls on a Friday or on a holiday, payroll will be paid the business day before the 15th or the end of the month. Pay stubs can be viewed on the Landrum portal. Please review stubs after each pay cycle and notify payroll, that's myself, Ellen Clement, or Cindy Lawless, if there are any questions about a pay stub. Direct deposit changes are made via the Landrum portal and should be completed before the end of a pay cycle. Thank you for taking the time to listen today. Hi, I'm Lindsay McPhail, the new training and development specialist here at NHE. I'm so excited for many new opportunities in the coming year to help enhance our training program and develop a strong workforce and team with the goal to improve homes and lives every day. Driven by NHE's commitment to training, I will work with each business unit to revamp our Grace Hill training assignments, track compliance, and report on total training hours. I'm currently working on updating the NHE orientation and onboarding process for new hires. I'm also excited about future opportunities with IT enhancements and will be assisting in upcoming trainings, as well as working with the senior management team. And of course, it's never too early to start thinking about our training plans for the 2022 Employee Conference. I'll end with a quote from Shep Hyken, a trainer and professional speaker in customer service. Training helps teach the vision and mission but employees must put the training into action for it to have meaning. I'm here to help you put your training in action. If you have any training questions or ever have any issues with Grace Hill, please reach out and I will be happy to help. And we'll end our HR updates with a reminder about performance reviews. Complete your performance review in Bamboo now through April 30th. The next assessments begin October 1st. Good morning, everyone. NHE's Corporate Services team is proud to present its honorees for the 2020-2021 GEM and Customer Service Awards. In both of these categories, I am pleased to say these employees have demonstrated outstanding performance above and beyond expectations. The GEM Award reflects an individual who is positive and well-liked by his or her colleagues and has overcome major challenges while excelling at their duties. This year's honoree celebrates her fifth year anniversary with NHE on April 25th. 2020 was very challenging for everyone, but several challenges for this person included leading her team through a software change, which was very challenging, three different bank account changes for all of the communities and a change to a new payment platform, ClickPay. She also handled taking on new communities and hired a new employee. She ensured that her team continued to provide accurate and timely financial packages to our board members. The 2020-21 GEM Award winner for corporate services is Elizabeth Tinky. 
The 2020-21 Customer Service Award celebrates a person who delivers exceptional customer service, promotes community and teamwork, and delivers above and beyond the call of duty, even when no one is watching. Then follows up to make certain the customer is satisfied. This year's honoree has been with NHE a little over two years. She is always very helpful to homeowners, board members, and other coworkers. She has dealt with some difficult and demanding board members in a very professional and courteous manner. Her smile and positive attitude are contagious to everyone around her. The 2020-21 Customer Service Award winner for Corporate Services is Cameron Brenneman. Congratulations to Elizabeth and Cameron. The entire NHE team is proud of you. Good morning. On behalf of NHE Corporate Services, I'm proud to present our honoree for the 2020-2021 Team Impact Award of the Year. Today's honoree has demonstrated outstanding performance above and beyond that which might be normally expected. The Team Impact Award promotes teamwork and bringing parties together for a common goal. Honorees provide high quality performance, handle challenging situations and individuals and personify dependability. This year's honoree has been with NHE for almost two years. In that time, he has developed a reputation for being easy to work with, demonstrating patience and calm even during times of stress. He works through assignments and performs well, creating confidence in all that he deals with. He's been a great asset to our IT team since joining NHE. The 2020-2021 Team Impact Award winner for Corporate Services is Mr. Stephen Athey. Wow, that was awesome. You gotta love Craig's presentation and congrats to the NHE Award winners as well. We are also proud of you for what you do for the company and for the residents. Now, let's take another short break, but don't go away. Time to freshen up your coffee, use that chat to win more prizes, add a photo and definitely check out our exhibitors, many of whom also have prizes to award. Fill up your passport by visiting the exhibition hall and you can also win even more prizes there. Now, when we return, you'll get to see many members of NHE, maybe even you, in a great music video celebrating who you are building for. We'll also celebrate our years of service honorees, plus we'll learn about an important diversity, equity, and inclusion initiative that NHE is kicking off very shortly that will involve and engage all of us. Finally, we'll honor even more award winners from our ranks, so don't go far. See you in just a few minutes. Dobby O'Connor and Zaleski CPAs provides accounting and auditing, tax and consulting services to those involved in affordable housing communities and related entities. Since 1987, the DOZ team has worked with not-for-profits on various community development endeavors. DOZ serves over 3,100 entities owning and managing affordable housing communities, real estate entities, and more in 46 states. For all your accounting needs, turn to DOZ a new perspective on the national accounting firm. Green Impact Commercial Landscapes was created in 2006 with the goal of offering a fresh perspective on an established landscape market. Green Impact takes a new approach to landscape maintenance, not the low blow and go maintenance that has plagued the industry. Green Impact creates and grows a relationship with every client and becomes a service company rather than a landscape company. For your landscape maintenance, resolution, and enhancement needs, turn to Green Impact Commercial Landscapes. Landrum HR is dedicated to making the business of people easier, just as they have since 1970. Landrum is among the few professional employer organizations to be both IRS certified and accredited by the Employer Services Assurance Corporation. Skilled in legal compliance, Clients use Landrum's buying power to attract and retain talent with valuable benefits. From training to recruiting, technology to risk reduction, turn to Landrum HR for all your HR needs. 
Reeves Construction is a top-rated, locally owned and operated company that specializes in reinstallation of residential and commercial roofs. In addition, Reeves offers siding, gutters, windows, seal coating and striping, and awnings to customers across the Carolinas. With decades of experience, you'll rest easy with Reeves Construction on the job. Reeves, here for the long haul. Reeves Construction is ready. Contact us today at www.callreeves.com. Whether you own a 300 unit apartment complex or a 1,000 square foot home, Storm Team Construction is the company to call when you are in need of quality workmanship. Whether you are in the market for roofing, remodeling, window and door installation, or other important upgrades, turn to the professionals at Storm Team. Across the Carolinas and Georgia, in Florida, and even Ohio, Storm Team is the partner you need. For top quality products, high quality workmanship, superior customer service, contact Storm Team Construction. You'll find us on the web, ready to serve you at stormteamconstruction.com. Discover a world of flooring possibilities at Right Rug. From hardwoods and carpet to laminate, tile, and luxury vinyl, with custom designs and custom rugs and runners, make a statement with rugs and flooring options from rightrug.com. Whatever you are looking for, appliances to doors, electrical to hardware, heating, cooling, lighting, lawn and garden, and more, turn to your local Home Depot, conveniently located near your business and online at homedepot.com. Green Remedies Waste and Landscaping are your environmental and waste experts, providing independent solid waste management and recycling services across America. To learn more, visit greenremedieswaste.com. Repair, replace, improve. That's the mantra of Night Owl Contractors. Night Owl provides interior and exterior renovations, restoration, and construction services with 24-7 responsiveness when needed. Connect online at nightowlcontractors.com. down the street he says why am i soft in the middle now why am i soft in the middle the rest of my life is so hard i need a photo opportunity i want a shot of redemption don't want to end up a cartoon in a cartoon graveyard bone digger bone digger dogs in the moonlight far away my well-lit door just a beer man and beer man and get these mutts away from me you know i don't find this stuff on Says, why am I short of attention? Got a short little span of attention, and all oh, my nights are so long. Where's my wife and family? What if I die here? 
Scatterings and orphanages. He looks around, around. He sees angels in the architecture spinning in infinity. He says, Hey, hallelujah, if you would be my bodyguard. She was cool, she was red hot. I mean, she was steaming. 
And that time over at Janet's place Well, this chick got up and she slapped Janet's face Man, we just fell about the place If that chick don't want to know, forget her Welcome back. Congratulations to all the corporate services and conventional winners. And how awesome was that, Craig Cargis? Amazing. All right, so Nicole, let's get some more prizes. I think that sounds like a good idea. First up, we have a $50 Home Depot gift card going to Will Rose. And again, these are randomly selected winners. Congratulations, Will. Then we also have a $100 Amazon gift card going to Anthony Farley. All right, Anthony. And our last gift is this awesome Bluetooth smart speaker going to Jim Bosniak. Congratulations. Congratulations. Welcome back. Hope you are ready and refreshed. Next, you'll get to see many members of NHE, maybe even you, in a great music video that you sent in those selfies for. You'll remember we asked you to tell us who you are building for. Well, now you'll get to see those answers. We'll also honor our years of service honorees, plus hear from the fine folks at HRQ about an important diversity, equity, and inclusion initiative that NHE is kicking off very shortly that will involve everyone, all of us. Finally, we'll honor even more award winners from our ranks, plus enjoy another powerful video. Without further delay, let's get this rolling.
Now it's time to honor those on the NHE team who have exemplified passion and commitment to serving our residents and customers as we present the 2020-2021 NHE Service Awards. Presented in increments of five years of service, these awards are particularly meaningful as they demonstrate constancy of tenure, the values of the individuals, a focus on customer service, the drive to produce positive results, and a general commitment to excellence over years with NHE. These individuals all achieved their service milestone during the period between October 2020 and April 2021. Together, let's recognize and honor these individuals who have served long and well with NHE. First up, let's honor those individuals with five years of service to NHE. NHE employees who have achieved five years of consecutive service with the company include Frank Brown, Maintenance Technician, Association Management. Max Burgess, Maintenance Technician, Augusta Heights, Affordable. Kelly Combs, Regional Manager, Conventional. Sandra Daly, Community Manager, Oakmont Place, Affordable. Donna Dennis, Community Manager, Lakeside Apartments, Affordable. Christine Frazier, Remote Accountant, Corporate Services. Jessica Gillespie, Community Manager, 62 Plaza, Affordable. Barbara Green Grayson, Community Manager, Dignity Village, Affordable. LaShonda Moore, Resident Service Coordinator, Hickory Hollow. Kelly Spencer, Vice President of Conventional Property Management, Corporate. Elizabeth Tenke, Association Accounting Supervisor, Corporate Services. Joseph Von Zabern, Maintenance Technician, Liberty Square, Affordable. Congratulations to all of these associates who have attained five years of service with NHE. Thank you for your contributions. Attaining 10 years of service to the company and our customers is a true accomplishment. And today we salute two outstanding employees who have reached this coveted milestone. Their unrelenting focus on delivering superb customer service, their drive to produce positive results, and their passion to serve others above and beyond themselves make these colleagues particularly special. Let's salute those with 10 years of service. Wanda Kane, Regional Manager, Affordable. Clifton Davis, Information Technology Manager, Corporate. These individuals all achieved their 10-year service milestone during the period between October 2020 and April 2021. Join me in thanking these NHE colleagues for 10 years of service to our customers and residents. Congratulations. If five years is uncommon and 10 years is noteworthy, 15 years of service to this organization is worthy of very special acclaim and applause. Alyssa Jarabek, accounting specialist for NHE at the corporate offices, has long demonstrated a passionate commitment to serving colleagues and customers at a high level. Her commitment to the organization and her willingness to go above and beyond in her important role makes her very special. Not many individuals attain 15 years of service with a single organization in their careers. Yet Alyssa has done so with professionalism and a smile. And we are all better for her efforts, her work ethic, and her friendship. NHE is honored to salute Alyssa Jarabek today for 15 years of service to NHE and our customers. Thank you, Alyssa. Good morning, everyone. My name is Sal Vergara, Vice President and Managing Director for HRQ. We're a division of Landrum HR. On behalf of Landrum HR and HRQ, we're very uh, happy and appreciative of having this opportunity to spend some time with you all. Uh, today, I've been working with, the past few weeks, Melissa and I have been working with uh, Taylor, Caroline, and Pat uh, to help develop a DE&I strategy that uh, 
uh, is sustainable for the company and, and all the growth initiatives that you guys have uh, for the following years. Um, DE and I, I think you'll learn and you've heard from Taylor that uh, it's an important, important and critical part of a, an overarching holistic strategy for a company. Uh, and we're here today to give you a high level overview of what DE and I really means. It's a uh, my friend and my uh, chief DE and I officer for PepsiCo actually says it's not a uh, it's not a um, uh, it's it's a uh, heart shift, not a not a mind shift. So. Um, Melissa Leland is one of our senior managing consultants who delivers this type of uh, training for our customers. And to give you a little bit of context, uh, I started hosting ideal roundtables this past year, uh, partly because of all the different societal unrest and un injustice that we've seen and all experienced this past year in 2020. Um, ideal is a, an acronym for inclusion, diversity, equity, and authentic leadership. And what I've done is I've had webinars where I have panelists, and these are chief DEI officers from the NBA, Nike, Walmart, Wayfair, Siemens, a lot of companies. And what we've done is we've assimilated or uh, amalgamated and consolidated their comments. So we provide companies like you best practices in DEI. So uh, if we can go to the next slide, just real quickly of uh, Landrum HR and HRQ, we won't spend a whole lot of time here, but. Uh, uh, as you guys know, we're very proud of our collaboration and partnership with NHE. Uh, we provide full service HR outsourcing and workforce solutions. Uh, from the HRQ perspective, we provide human resources consulting of which DEI consulting is part of. And then the last part is a foundational part of HRQ is search and interim. So we help uh, companies find CHROs, chief DEI officers and the like. So without further delay, Again, thank you for having us, Melissa Leland. Thanks, Sal. And we're so thankful to be able to be a part of your um, this this was, um, employee meeting today and that we get to be a part of that and continue to be a partner. Um, I wanna talk, um, we wanted to spend some time talking about diversity and equity, equity inclusion. As Sal mentioned, it's such an important topic and many are further prioritizing this topic based on the things that Sal talked about in, in communities and, um, and also in the work environment and where there's opportunity to create impact there. So what I wanna first start with, this is where you'll get out your phones and turn on the camera and you should be able to scan the QR code on the screen or you can join at slido.com and then enter this code here. And I'll give you a couple minutes to spend some time on this and share, when you think of the phrase diversity, equity, and inclusion, what words come to mind? And so if you could input that in, it should give you an opportunity to enter some, some adjectives in there. And um, great, great, we're already having great participation. If you guys are, are using it correctly, good job. So we have belonging, progress, equal, growth, equality, belonging, together, let's see, together, fair, yes, different, I like that, growth, kindness, harmony, whole, same, progress, I love, I really like that, awareness, just, equals coming up a, a bit. That's the, the words that get the most, that get used the most um, are in the larger font. Variety, like that, fairness, allies, inclusive, family, peace, important, advocacy, it's a great one as well people, team, sincere, universal, understand. I'm trying to, to scan to see what other ones are coming up. These are great, great descriptors. Accountable, oneness, I see. So these are fantastic and keep them coming in. Um, I really like what you've all come up with and I like that there's that the internal side 
the intrinsic that it it's part of a belief, a value system, an emotion that is elicited through a lot of the words that you're each sharing. Patience. Um, I haven't seen that one before. I like that. Happy, deserving, worthy. Okay, these are great. Um, and yeah, they really reflect kind of internal value systems. And we're talking about diversity, equity, inclusion today because clearly the issues have not been solved in the, in the community when we continue to see the social unrest and occurrences that are happening all too frequently, but also in the workplace. And so much that employers are starting to prioritize this. And there's now also more accountability for employers to focus on diversity, equity, and inclusion. Um, so there's, there's some things that are telling us we need to address this. And there's also those things within ourselves that tell us this isn't solved yet. And there's opportunity to either start or to continue to grow um, based on where you're at. Thank you so much um, for all that you've provided. These are really great. I like welcomed, that's a, that's a good one needed. So when we talk about diversity, equity, inclusion, and we define it, I wanna go through um, the different components of that definition. Um, it's evolved as a practice where it used to just be diversity. And then it started growing to also be equity and then add inclusion. And belonging has been a, a center theme now that's continued to develop. We've learned that just having variety um, isn't enough. Um, so first starting with inclusion, this can come about in different ways, many ways that you already represented through the polling. So there being variety and feeling welcomed. So people feel most wanted um, and that their thoughts ideas, perspectives, that they matter um, and that they feel part of a greater community. And so this can be inclusion based on demographical um, areas and, and topics with race and ethnicity, sorry, um, gender, those kinds of areas, um, religion, sexual orientation. So it can be those, those topics that we we hear that are covered in protected classes um, and, and where there's that feeling of inclusion there that I'm wanted regardless of if, I'm, if I look different, if I act different, if I talk different, um, that I am part of something and that it matters. Um, and then going into diversity, multiple identities are represented. So this is where we can start to expand our thinking of diversity, equity, and inclusion. So it can be diversity in thought it can, and, and thinking style. It can be diversity in your background, in your education, um, where you grew up and what perspective that brings, what kind of environment you grew up in and, and how that changed you. Maybe what previous organizations you came from and what insight do you bring um, that there's a mix of those who are newer to the organization and they have fresher experience of what other organizations do. And then there's some who are recognized and congratulations who have been here for a while and they have great insight into what has been the history here? What have we done and why have we done it? And where are we aiming towards? Where did we come from? And so that there's those natures of diversity as well that are important to consider that we don't have too narrow of a definition of diversity. And there's also equity, that's the um, part of the equation as well. And this is the fair treatment of all people to ensure participation and advancement. And the word fair was represented in the poll. Um, somebody provided that feedback. And I wanna pause for a second and take a minute to distinguish between equity and equality, because sometimes those are talked about um, synonymously and or they're maybe not known the difference between the definitions or can be mixed up. So equality, I'll, I have a daughter who's in soccer, so I'll give an analogy. So equality is if everybody at the end of the season, whether they showed up every 
game and practice 10 minutes early and were ready to go, or if they showed up just at the last game, everybody got a participation ribbon. That would be equality. Equity is everyone has the same opportunity to achieve something. So each team within her league and each player within her league has the opportunity to play, has the opportunity to advance their skills, has access to a coach, has access to the, um, the gear that they need in order to be able to play safely and effectively. And so that would then be equality. Each kid has the same opportunity in order to achieve the outcome that they're trying to achieve. And so I wanted to distinguish those because that's often um, a misnomer of, oh, we just treat everybody the same. And, and that's, not, um, that's not the full essence is looking at opportunities that we provide um, for development, for training, for promotion, for um, participation in education and other things. And then what this all adds up to though, the end goal really is that each person feels they belong. They have a sense of belonging. It's not a matter of tolerance. It's not a matter of, oh, well, we have you know, this percentage of representation over here, so we're good. This is about, does each person feel like they truly belong, that they're wanted? And that is, that comes with a, a greater feeling of connection and emotion and, and comes with experience and also comes with each person feeling evidence that they are wanted and that they belong within this organization, that there's a space for them, there's a role for them and that they are sought out. I want to then move on to now, like, why are we talking about this so much now? Um, why has it increased and in, in how much we're hearing about it? With, um, with HRQ, we've gotten so many calls um, with the clients wanting to engage us for diversity, equity, and inclusion efforts. Sal started the round table for IDEAL where there's a very captive audience, people seeking out more information and insight into this topic. So why? And so I want to take a moment and each have you look at this picture and you can participate through the chat if that's an option um, and, and share what do you see? And I, I'm not sure if the chat is a capability or if this is just more, maybe more an exercise you can just do on your own. Um, but looking at this, what people commonly, um, here I'm getting some, some chats, just one second. Um, okay, we're getting comments and good. I'm glad that the chat feature is working. So there's some saying three circles, two stars, okay? Intersectionality, what else do you see? What exists in this picture? Okay, so what some people will say, there's a variety of, of responses that are common with this, which is some people see two triangles, one is upright and one is downward facing. Some people see a star. Some people see a triangle that is hanging over three circles uh, or in front of three circles. And the truth is none of these exist. There are no circles on this page, no full circles. Um, there's kind of some Pac-Man looking icons. Um, no triangles exist. Some, some that are two thirds complete exist um, because they're not filled in. And so where this is related is we can have a tendency to unconsciously fill in the blanks and state what exists that doesn't actually exist based on our experience, based on our 
beliefs, based on our backgrounds, based on our upbringing, whatever that might be. And we can then operate off of the conclusion that there's three circles, there's two triangles, there's a star, whatever it may be um, that you saw going on in this picture when it's actually not the case. So related to the workplace. So we can say, well, there's equity for every employee. If they want to achieve climbing to this certain position, everybody has the same capability to be able to do that. Everybody has access to training and development. Everybody can go get a degree if they want to. Um, everybody can work at a certain location if they want to. We can, we can maybe have those lenses and make those assumptions and we don't always see um, some realities or some missing lines um, that may make it appear that they exist and they don't. And where this boils down to is that unconscious bias of those things that look pretty evident and we don't see within ourselves all the time um, that we think we look at things a certain way and we don't always understand our full nature of how we see things. And where this can then manifest itself is who do we, who do we connect most closely with? Who do we get along best with? Who do we feel we best identify with? Um, how do we make decisions? And are we making those decisions based on truth or are we making them based on perceptions such as there's two triangles and three circles? Um, and then what are the implications of those decisions to our broader audience and to our employees and to our community members and our residents. How does that translate and, and what are the ongoing domino effects because of that unconscious bias? Um, then what does this, so we talked about what this impacts within ourselves and in our own thinking patterns and our decision-making and in our approaches. But what does this impact to organizations as a whole? Why does it matter? Um, sometimes I hear people say, well, you know, we're, we have a diverse audience. Why are we focusing on this as much? Um, we are in the middle of a pandemic. We need to get the economy going. We're in the middle of a pandemic and our financials aren't here. That's the priority. But they're not mutually exclusive efforts. A strong DEI emphasis not only is the right thing to do for ourselves, you know, internally and um, in community, but also for our organization. And they also accomplish those those greater business objectives, those business goals, those financial targets that we're looking for. At the same time, it is a means to support accomplishing those. So there's been a lot of research on these topics and. One study by Gartner who collects, they do a lot of research, collect a lot of data. Um, they looked at team performance and those with, um, that are operating within a diverse environment have up to 30%, um, or, sorry, um, up to 30% in high diverse environments um, have higher team performance. When we look at diverse management teams, they had a 19% increase in revenue compared to their less diverse counterparts. So there's bottom line impact, there's financial impact. And then when we looked at talent, so I have not yet met any client who's saying we're good on talent, we're fully staffed, we, have, we only attract top and keep top talent. I've never heard that before. Um, I hear the opposite of, gosh, Talent's hard to find, staff's hard to find, let alone high, you know, high performing talent. It's really hard. And from a candidate perspective, from a job seeker perspective, there's things that are important to them as well. It's not just taking whatever comes along, but there's an increased importance for candidates on what matters to them and what employers they're really even willing to apply for work at and which ones they're, they're willing to accept a job offer from. And it's not just about how much are they paying and where are they located. There's more value-driven drivers, especially now that's con continued to increase um, the level of importance for candidates on who they're seeking out. And so in a recent survey, 83% of respondents indicated an employer's commitment 
to diversity impacts whether they'll accept a job offer or not. And 70% of um, employees said they would consider looking for another job if their current employer didn't represent diverse equity and inclusion in their workplace. And so this is a big deal. So this, this speaks to attracting and retaining talent you need in order to accomplish those, those more tangible results such as growth and revenue and, um, and geographical, um, you know, like the, the market that share that you carry those other things that you're looking to achieve. This is a means to help accomplish that while doing the right thing. And with diversity, equity, and inclusion, so people can sometimes feel really overwhelmed with this. Of, Gosh, I feel like we're trying to boil the ocean and do it all at once. Um, but just keeping some things in mind of, um, it's not a moment, but it's a movement. This is a journey. This takes time. This does not happen overnight. Um, and and it, it, it takes time in order for it to start to really get some grip behind it as well. And not being overwhelmed with that, not letting that stop that it, within you as an organization, within your team and within yourself. And there may be efforts that are coming that are throughout the organization. And then there's some things that you can affect on your own team as a people leader. And then there's things that you can affect um, on your team as, as an individual as well. If you don't have anyone reporting to you, you can create impact as well. And um, there's some things that, um, that you can do independently. There's, there's greater things that organizations are doing um, as a whole. Um, so for example, which is the importance of it. So NASDAQ, um, is asking their member companies to provide them with some kind of DEI strategy. They're asking for this. Um, and companies like McDonald's, Starbucks, Chipotle, and hundreds of others are starting to really take a stance and, in, and look at their compensation, their ability to manage people, and how are we equipping our leaders with that? One's um, promotability is predicted on their understanding of DEI. So I work in Colorado. And we just the, there was just legislation passed of equal work for equal pay. And we are held to a really high standard now, employers are, on making sure that there's equal pay and you have to be able to prove it. Um, and um, additionally, we've, we've, we do equity studies where it may be something like, yeah, we have this percentage of females, this percentage of males, and they're, they're pretty equal, so we're good. Well, we take a step deeper and what we found is, for example, um, there were some areas within one clan that we worked with where um, women were, when they would do self-assessments, um, all employees would do self-assessments. And in one area, when women would rate themselves a certain way, a manager um, tended to rate them lower than that. But when males would rate themselves, the manager would tend to rate them higher than they rated themselves. So you've got to look at details like that because those impact employment decisions, promote, promotions, selection, um, succession planning, so many things that you want to be conscious about. So when we look at this journey of growing and advancing or even starting diversity, equity, inclusion, um, for anyone, it has to start with that desire. We have to care. And and something I, I say often is you can't always make people care. <laughs> it can be important to you, but at some point we have to care for ourselves. We have to care because it's the right thing to do because we care about other people's experiences and creating a sense of belonging mm -hmm. for those around us. So we have to have that desire and then make a commitment saying, I'm committed to um, learning more, to increasing um, my unconsciousness to some more consciousness and making a commitment to truly create impact within yourself and influence around you. Um, the next step is education and awareness. So understanding what unconscious bias is, understanding what that looks like within me. Where do I think that I completely celebrate diversity, equity, and inclusion 
and promote it and live it? And where do I maybe see some triangles or circles that don't exist? And I'm, I'm writing the rest and I don't truly understand it. And so education and awareness is really important. And also that humble reflection after receiving some education awareness, stopping and thinking, wow, where do I maybe have bias? Where do I maybe make conclusions that I didn't realize I did, or I didn't realize that they were creating um, or holding any weight in the decisions I make or in who I surround myself with or in what I, who I'm most comfortable with, what opportunities I provide, um, whom I invite to lunch, um, those kinds of things. And so that humble reflection of where, where may I have opportunity to make some, some shifts. And, and then the next one is listening with a desire to learn. So a big shift that we've seen in the diversity, equity, and inclusion um, kind of journey and, and also increased, um, increased focus is that the way diversity used to be handled is we sit in a room and we would talk about diversity and why it's so important and tell them other people's experiences, what they were feeling, what they go through and how to resolve it. And where we've, we've come to understand there needed to be some change is there wasn't a lot of listening going on. And that's where after the education and awareness, we need to start with listening and listening with a desire to learn. So um, sometimes we see surveys, maybe you had it like a previous employer or you see it with a, a certain company where they keep surveying you as a customer, but then you don't see any change. You don't see any follow-up and you get to a point where you think, why am I sharing my feedback again with this business? when um, nothing seems to change. And so with that, it, it comes wanting to feel listened to and heard. And so we need to listen to others with a desire to learn about what's their truth, what's their experiences, where are they telling us, hey, you're seeing triangles and circles, but they actually aren't there. And the next is allyship. So looking at how do we support others who may have voices that aren't as strong or don't have the advocacy or support that they may need to create an equitable experience for them. And then moving into long-term thinking. So what, what do we need to put in place longer term to really create some results that stick? And then challenging self with others. This might be one of the most important ones is we can create all the plans in the world. Um, but without that action, um, it doesn't have teeth in it. So this, this means getting uncomfortable. It means challenging behaviors around us. It means challenging our own thinking. Um, and that's what will really create meaningful change and create that sense of belonging for others when those things begin to happen. And so that's what I wanted to share today. Um, I think we have um, a couple of minutes. Um, and so I don't know if there's any questions that anyone has. I think we just have a minute or two before we wrap up this section. Right, I'm not seeing anything um, come through, but we'll be sharing our information. Um, so if you have any questions that you did come up with that you wanna talk about offline, um, also we'll be sharing some links to some of those round tables that Sal has been presenting, particularly on allyship and other areas of where you can create influence independently. Um, we want to thank you for including us, and I hope you have a wonderful rest of your meeting. Thank you.
Good morning, Team NHE. The NHE Homeowners Association Management Team is proud to present its honorees for the 2020-2021 GEM Team Impact and Customer Service Awards of the Year. In each of these separate categories, today's honorees have demonstrated outstanding performance above and beyond that which might normally be expected. The GEM Award reflects an individual who is positive and well-liked by colleagues and has overcome major challenges while excelling at their duties. This year's honoree came to the HOA team from our conventional apartment division and initially thought HOA management would be, in her own words, pretty easy. It has turned out to be anything but, and she has made that transition with ease. Her clients and coworkers all agree that she is a bright, shining light in our division, and we're so fortunate to have her on our team. The 2020-2021 GEM Award winner for Association Management is Ms. Kayla Taylor. The Team Impact Award promotes teamwork and brings parties together for a common goal. Honorees provide high quality performance, handle challenging situations and individuals, and personify dependability. This year's honoree has been with NHE as an HOA manager for almost 10 years, and during that time has witnessed many changes in our division. She always makes a concerted effort to welcome and train new managers, and her experience and knowledge is a valuable resource for our entire team, especially me. The 2020-2021 Team Impact Award winner for Association Management is Ms. Kathy Bowick. The 2020-2021 Customer Service Award celebrates exceptional customer service, promotes community and teamwork, and delivers above and beyond the call of duty even when no one is watching, then follows up to make certain the customer is satisfied. This year's honoree serves on the front line of our department and is often the first point of contact for our residents. Despite being often placed directly in the line of fire, she always maintains her composure and provides the best level of service anyone can offer. Having joined us in 2019, she has steadily advanced her career by moving from receptionist to directly assisting the managers with their daily tasks and projects. The 2020-2021 Customer Service Award winner for Association Management is Ms. Judith Clark. Congratulations to all these honorees. The entire NHE team is proud of you, Kayla, Kathy, and Judith. On behalf of the NHE Service Coordination Team, I am proud to present our honorees for the 2020-2021 GEM Team Impact Customer Service and Service Coordinator of the Year Awards. In each of these categories, our honorees have demonstrated outstanding performance above and beyond that which might normally be expected. Let's start with the GEM Award for Service Coordination. The GEM Award reflects an individual who is positive and well-liked by colleagues and has overcome major challenges while excelling at their duties. This year's honoree has offered us many inspiring ideas and is always motivated to hear about the success they have brought to their property. The property manager at this site sends continuous compliments to supervisors and has stated many times that she would not continue to work at this property without this service coordinator by her side. This service coordinator is outstanding, innovative, resourceful, and always finding amazing resources for the residents at their property. She is a true gem. The 2020-2021 GEM Award winner for service coordination is Katie White, Resident Service Coordinator of Greenleaf. The Team Impact Award promotes teamwork and brings parties together for a common goal. Honorees provide high quality performance, handle challenging situations and individuals and personify dependability. This year's honoree inspires us to work through our own struggles and do our jobs with integrity, class, and dedication. This person's continuous sharing of ideas and how to gain resources for our residents and demonstrates unbelievable networking skills. The 2020-2021 Team Impact Award winner for service coordination is Ms. Terry Perez, Resident Service Coordinator of Seagull Phyllis. The 2020-2021 Customer Service Award celebrates exceptional customer service, promotes community and teamwork, and delivers above and beyond the call of duty, even when no one is watching, then follows up to make certain the customer is satisfied. This year's honoree is someone we can always count on. We needed this person to move to another location 
that had a challenging population. We knew her skills and expertise were just what we needed for the property and the residents. It did not take long for her to gain the trust and build rapport with her residents and on-site staff. This person delivers notable results with high quality customer service. The 2020-2021 Customer Service Award winner for service coordination is Ms. Savara Sawyers, Resident Service Coordinator of Wedgwood Towers Apartments. Finally, let's honor our Service Coordinator of the Year. The Service Coordinator of the Year demonstrates extraordinary initiative and commitment to their role, excels in documentation and has shown exemplary commitment to their team, residents and properties above and beyond what is required. This honoree seeks out all solutions for their residents to age in place, achieves significant measurable outcomes as a result of their efforts, and it works to improve the health and wellness of residents. She initiates innovative partnerships with community service providers to help improve quality of life for the residents and serves as a resource in dealing with issues by coworkers, colleagues, residents. This year's honoree oversees two locations, serves as a mentor to other resident service coordinators, consistently receives compliments from their peers, residents, and management team. She is known for being soft-spoken, very helpful, assisting residents with their questions or problems. She excels at obtaining resources for her property and with her online documentation. The 2020-2021 Service Coordinator of the Year is Lori Smith, Resident Service Coordinator at Dignity Village and Palmer Place Apartments. Congratulations to all of these honorees. The entire NHE team is proud of you. Wow, I love that music video and congrats to the NHE Years of Service honorees and award winners as well. We are all so proud of you and what you do for our company and residents. Now, let's take a final short break, but don't go away. The grand finale is next. Freshen up that coffee, use chat to win a prize, add a photo, and definitely check out our exhibitors, many of whom also have prizes to award. Don't forget to also fill up your passport by visiting the exhibit hall, and you can even win more prizes. When we return, Taylor will share a short message with us about building for the future this year and beyond. We'll celebrate teamwork in a powerful video here from past NHE Award honorees and unveil the winners of the 2020-2021 Golden Hammer and Harris Davis Award of Excellence. We'll wrap up with a challenge from your executive team. So don't go far. See you in just a few minutes. Cisco Safety are the full service safety and fire experts to turn to for all your safety services, products, and training needs. With comprehensive licensing and certifications, the Cisco Safety Team is your best choice for all your safety needs. Online at ciscosafety.com. For more than 150 years, Sherwin-Williams has been America's leader in paint and coatings. With 4,300 neighborhood stores across America, Turn to Sherwin-Williams for expert advice, superior service, and all your paint and painting supplies. Online at sherwin-williams.com. Reliable Roofing serves nine of the top 10 multifamily companies nationwide with expert repairs, maintenance, and roofing installation. Nationwide service, delivering reliability every day. Turn to reliableroofing.biz. At McGriff Insurance, we manage your risks so that you can manage your business and make it reach its full potential. Offering comprehensive business insurance, risk management, and employee benefit solutions. Find your McGriff Insurance expert on the web at McGriffInsurance.com. Building or running a successful business takes knowledge, skill, and expertise. That's why in the Carolinas, more smart business owners turn to Eller Tonson Buck. Their experienced litigators have the skills and experience you need to handle complex legal issues. For business and construction litigation, workers' comp, and insurance defense needs, turn to the attorneys at Eller Tonson Bach, because results matter. 
Find them online at etblawfirm.com. Apartments.com is the leading online apartment listing website, offering renters access to information on more than 1 million available units for rent. Powered by CoStar, the Apartments.com network reaches millions of renters nationwide, driving both qualified traffic and highly engaged renters to leasing offices. If you're in the market to rent or in the business of finding new renters for your property, turn to Apartments.com. Enjoy renting made simple, right from your fingertips. Apartments.com. Once again, congratulations to the Years of Service awardees and the HOA and Service Coordination awardees. Nicole, I think we have some more prizes to give away. We do. Up first, we have this really cool countertop growing system. And the winner of this prize is going to be Jeremy Case. Yay! Next up, we have a pair of Beats, Power Beats by what? Dr. Dre, going to Christy Lay. And finally, we have a $100 Visa gift card going to Alexis Thomas. Whoa! So congratulations! Oh, yes! We also want to go ahead and give a quick shout out to our sponsor, Zillow, and thank you for your participation in our conference today. And guys, don't go anywhere yet because we have so many more prizes to give out in the, in the chat box. And also, our leaderboard and passport is going to be open until 2 o'clock today. So make sure you get your entries in there to be entered into those giveaways as well. And if you don't win a prize, remember, we're all winners in here. That's right. Welcome back. Hope you are ready and refreshed. We are in the home stretch of this incredible NHE virtual conference. Taylor is about to kick us off with a, some brief thoughts on building for the future from today onwards into 2022 and beyond. We'll celebrate teamwork with a short video here from some prior honorees of NHE's top awards on what it meant to them to be honored. We'll present the winners of the 2020-2021 Golden Hammer and Harris Davis Award of Excellence. And we'll wrap things up with a brief challenge from our executive team to you. Let's get rolling. Thanks, Nigel. And welcome back, everyone, for our final segment of today's virtual conference. As I said in my opening comments, building for the future is about getting 1% better every day. It's about committing ourselves and our colleagues to do just a little bit more to serve our residents and our customers and to help improve homes and lives every day. It's about developing and improving our unique talents to be the very best we can be, to help others learn and grow, to do things the right way, not just the easiest way, and about finding, developing, and keeping the very best team we can as we continue to grow and advance our company. At the end of the day, NHE is only as good as you make it. Each of us plays a vital role in that growth and success. Looking to the future, 
I believe the outlook for NHE is very bright. Each of our business units continues to perform well from HOA and conventional to affordable service coordination and development. I fully expect that to continue. Operationally, we continue to improve and advance. Our IT systems are improving. Our communications is better and more consistent. Our visibility in our markets is way up. We are about to embark on important training and development plans with the addition of Lindsay. We are committed to becoming a more diverse and inclusive organization through our plan learning with the HRQ team. Our finances are strong despite the pandemic. We have new business opportunities in every business unit. This only happens thanks to each of you doing the very best job you can do each and every day. Our residents notice, our customers notice, even our competition notices your performance. I could not be prouder of each and every one of you. And yet, to go where we want to go as an organization, I ask that you find that 1% more every day. If you do that, if we all do that, then we are all truly building for a brighter future for all of us. We have celebrated numerous important awards today, and I congratulate each of you that has been honored today and cannot wait to congratulate those of you who will win in the future. Shortly, we will honor more individuals with our top awards, the Golden Hammer for Outstanding Performance, Quality Work, and Commitment to Excellence, and the Harris Davis Award of Excellence, named for my dad who passed away last year for true embodiment of his principles and commitment to excellence. But before we do, enjoy with me these two brief videos that bring to life the qualities of our top award honorees. Let me tell you something you already know. The world ain't all sunshine and rainbows. It's a very mean and nasty place, and I don't care how tough you are, it will beat you to your knees and keep you there permanently if you let it. You, me, or nobody is gonna hit as hard as life. But it ain't about how hard you hit. It's about how hard you can get hit and keep moving forward. How much you can take and keep moving forward. That's how winning is done. Pain is temporary. It may last for a minute, or an hour, or a day, or even a year. But eventually, it will subside, and something else will take its place. If I quit, however, it will last forever. The margin for error is so small. I mean, one half a step too late or too early and you don't quite make it. One half second too slow, too fast, you don't quite catch it. The inches we need are everywhere around us. They're in every break of the game, every minute, every second. You got a dream, you got to protect it. People can't do something themselves. They want to tell you you can't. Want something? Go get it. Pick. Don't be afraid to fail. You can't always win, but don't be afraid of making decisions. You have to believe that something different can happen. He who says he can and he who says he can't are both usually right. Most of you say you want to be successful, but you don't want it bad. You just kind of want it. You don't want it badder than you want to party. You don't want it as much as you want to be cool. You, most of you don't want success as much as you want to sleep. Our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. It is our light, not our darkness, that most frightens us. You have to dig deep down, dig deep down, and ask yourselves, who do you want to be? And figuring out for yourselves what makes you happy, no matter how crazy it may sound to the people. Make a choice, right? You just decide 
what it's going to be, who you're going to be, how you're going to do it. Just decide. Why not? Why can't I be the MVP of the league? Why can't I be the best player in the league? I don't see why. Why? Why can't I do that? What did you say to the kid? It ain't about how hard you hit. It's about how hard you can get hit. And keep moving forward. How much you can take. And keep moving forward. Get up. Get up. We can stay here, get the shit kicked out of us, or we can fight our way back into the light. We can climb out of hell. One inch at a time. To be able at any moment to sacrifice what you are for what you will become. Most of you won't be successful because when you're studying and you get tired, you quit. I don't do well in math. You're right. You ain't never studied. I'm not good in writing because you have never written before. Talent you have naturally. Skill is only developed by hours and hours and hours of beating on your craft. If you are not making someone else's life better, then you're wasting your time. Don't cry to give up. Try to keep going. Don't cry to quit. You already in pain. You already hurt. Get a reward from it. Now, if you know what you're worth, now go out and get what you're worth. But you gotta be willing to take the hits and not point the finger saying you ain't where you want to be because of him or her or anybody. Cowards do that, and that ain't you. You're better than that. Because every day is a new day. Every moment is a new moment. So now you got to go out and show them that I'm a different creature now. I'm going to show you how great I am. In the 17th chapter of St. Luke, it is written, the kingdom of God is within man, not one man, nor a group of men, but in all men, in you. You, the people, have the power. The power to create machines, the power to create happiness. You, the people, have the power to make this life free and beautiful, to make this life a wonderful adventure. Now, what are you going to do? Limits, like fears, are often just an illusion. How I felt last year when I received the Golden Hammer Award was amazing. Um, what I thought was I had actually made an accomplishment. I felt like I was a part of the team at NHE. The significance of the award to me lets me know that I'm headed on the right path in my career. What we do is a thankless job. It lets me know that I am appreciated. When I won the Harris Davis Award of Excellence, I was completely shocked. Um, I was actually speaking with one of my coworkers while Taylor was going over the information for the award. And I heard something about Cliffs at Glassy and I immediately, it caught my attention. I thought, oh my goodness, this is me. I was just like, oh my gosh, I could, I could not believe it at all. I felt that way because I knew how important of an award that it was um, and that it was very special to NHE. Um, and I also knew that there were a lot of other employees, you know, at NHE that were very deserving of that award. So that just made it extra special. I never in a million years thought that that would be something that I would be selected to have. When I think about my time here at NHE, I feel like I'm a part of the family in more ways than I can imagine. I feel like we all work together to accomplish the same goal at the end of the day, and that's to serve our homeowners. 
The advice that I would give to a new employee just coming in to NHE would be just hang in there um, because the NHE family is awesome. You're going to get lots of internal recognition. You're going to feel like you're part of the team. You know, you will actually come to enjoy your job. Don't be afraid to fail. If you come into this and you feel like you're going to fail, it's okay. Just get back up, ask for help and try again. For me personally, it has become a job that I really enjoy coming to in a place that I love to work and you don't always get that. That was a wonderful tribute to last year's winners of both the Golden Hammer Award and the Harris Davis Award of Excellence. We are very appreciative of the last year's award winners taking time out to share their thoughts with all of us on what the awards meant to them. It's also a perfect segue into NHE announcing our 2020-21 winners of these two prestigious awards for our company. Let's start with our Golden Hammer Award winner. The Golden Hammer Award is presented to an NHE employee who consistently maintains our assets, treating the community, the portfolio as their own. The recipient quickly finds resources to resolve issues rather than automatically replacing or contracting out work. Honorees work to repair items in need with the highest workmanship, superior customer service, and integrity. This year's honoree has served his business unit in several different positions since starting with NHE in 2013. He has built strong relationships with clients, vendors, and NHE teammates, both within his business unit, as well as others having earned their confidence and respect. He is known for his heart, his humor, an infectious positive attitude, and he consistently goes above and beyond what is expected, especially during the past year, supporting his teammates to navigate COVID. Our Golden Hammer Award winner for 2020-2021 is Viet Nguyen, Service Coordinator Supervisor in NHE's Service Coordination Business Unit. Congratulations, Viet. We now have reached time for presentation of the final award of NHE's virtual conference, the Harris Davis Award of Excellence. This prestigious honor is annually bestowed on a single individual who best epitomizes the character, work ethic, commitment, and passion for service that my dad embodied and spoke of so often. The award is always significant, but particularly so this year as NHE and our family lost my father one year ago when he departed this world that he made such an impact upon. While NHE misses him every day, his spirit and example live on through each of us, and this presentation of this Harris Davis Award of Excellence is another occasion to celebrate his contributions. This recipient is chosen based on his or her embodiment of the mission of NHE, provides professional and caring services to improve the homes and quality of life of residents in the diverse communities we serve. This person values relationships with residents, employees, property owners, and vendors, and consistently acts with integrity and fairness at all times. This year's recipient shows his dedication to his work and coworkers on a daily basis. He is never satisfied with the status quo and is constantly looking to improve both himself and those that he works with. Beyond the success that he has enjoyed in just a few short years, he also is willing to lend a helping hand in many other ways that aren't part of his job description. Whether producing conference videos, wearing a costume for a resident event, or helping with the new corporate office decor, his engagement and attitude is infectious. Most importantly, he genuinely cares about all people and is passionate about developing the very best affordable housing possible. The 2020-2021 winner of the Harris Davis Award of Excellence is Joseph Cass, Development Manager in the Development Division of NHE. Congratulations, Joseph. And that brings us to the end of our awards. And let's take a brief moment and recap all of our honorees together. Congratulations to all of our winners and thank you to everyone who makes such a difference in improving the homes 
and lives of our residents every day. As we prepare to wrap up shortly, our executive team has some special thoughts for each of you regarding building for the future here at NHE. Let's hear from them now. We're building. 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 For the 